Williams. He sold over seven, $670 million in real estate last year alone, and he is the king of crypto. <laughs> Welcome, Brandon Williams. How are you doing? A Good to see podcast. you, brother. Good to see you. I got to turn this up a little. Yeah, turn it up. It's a little echoey. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. How are you I thought we'd start with a, a little trip down memory lane, Brandon. Yeah, that picture was right at sunset. You see, it's getting dark out there, and I was out there all day long just enjoying the beautiful Pacific Ocean. This is us at your house in Malibu, and. This is us, like, you wouldn't come out of the water. Even the kids were done with the water. <laughs> I got to get my energy out. We worked so hard during the week that you get me in that water, I'll stay in all day. I've never seen you happier than in, <laughs> at your Malibu house. Here's us with Rainy, just, like, posing for pictures. Yeah, of course, you guys are all done up and get a good shot. And yeah, we got a great shot. Here's us mine. Here's the family just ki kicking it on the couch. Yeah, I made the big lazy boy couch so everybody could hang out and watch the ocean and watch a little TV. Oh, uh, and then here's where I almost died. I yeah, that's died. us catching a little air on the jet ski. Look at us. That was right off the bat when you went when you came on. We <laughs> hit that wave, man. You're a natural on that thing. You're insane on the jet ski. I was scared for my life. And then we got to run into that patch of dolphins right off the bat. I had Alexis on, and she wanted to see dolphins. And then I get you on the back, and they all and they all show up. <laughs> there were like ten and a baby. And you know what we should have done? We should have jumped in the water and swam with them. I don't know. I know they they they'll. I've done that before, and they kind of then take off on you. But you could hear them communicating underneath the water, which is really cool. You hear them quacking underneath the water. How long have you had the beach house in Malibu, Brandon? We've, well, we've been renting one for almost eight years, on and off for eight years. And we'll do a year at a time, two years at a time. And then we won't do it. And I noticed every time I don't have one, it's like, if I know I have a beach house, even if I'm in the city working, I'm like yeah. less stressed out because I know I have a place to go to. Because this job is so, you're like a doctor on call. So mm -hmm. You always got to be there. So I can't go on vacation for me because I'm obsessed with my work. I can't leave for more than three or four days. Right. So otherwise, and the whole time I'm on a phone. So having Malibu, if I have to do a showing on the weekend, I could just jump right, you know, and get back in the city in 30 minutes. Even but when we, we were oh, there, you guys were still trying to like look at houses. I was like, we're, we're trying to watch the UFC fight. You're still looking at houses. Well, I gave you a house tour. I gave you and Alexis a house tour in the jet ski. We went all up and down the beach, and we looked at all the houses, everybody that owns them, what just sold, what's on the market. Amazing. So, and I asked, you, I asked you on the jet ski, I was having a moment from after the Dolphins, and I asked you, Brandon, did you ever think when you were growing up with a single mother in L.A. that this would be your family life as an adult? You have a house in Malibu, a house in Springdale. It's stunning. You've got two beautiful kids. Did you ever think that this would be your life? Well, you know, there was times in my life where I believed it. and There was times in my life where I didn't believe it. But when I really got clear and I really focused and I was able to get into real estate and realize that buying a house is not so crazy and mortgages and taxes and if you set a goal and you step up to it god usually rewards you if your head's in the right place and you do the right things and that's what i try to teach my clients all the time i try to say like listen i will show you how to do this so you realize it's not that hard because i was selling real estate for four years before i owned a place and and i was selling all these places but i didn't actually own a place yet that's and so good to know. Was like, like, listen, I think a lot of agents are like, I sell real estate, but I don't own a house. You did it for four years and didn't own a house. Yeah, and listen, we all have to start from nothing. So it's not a bad thing, but I'm helping people buy places and being in their advisors, and I don't own a place yet. And listen, I worked hard, and we, we bought our first place, and then we bought it. And now we've probably bought and sold 10 places since we started. So it's not that. And, you know, and we keep... Yeah, you, on you up. level up, you level up. Yeah. I love that you say that you inspire your your uh, clients to do the same because- Yeah, and listen, I inspire other agents to do the same too. 
you know, the more you help and the more you give back, the more I believe you get. And I try to teach people that, guys, it's not that. I mean, I try to teach people all the time. They're giving out FHA loans for $750,000. All you need is 3% down to get an FHA loan, which is a first homeowner's loan. So, and we've done that. We help so many people out. And it's like, put your money into a piggy bank instead of giving it to a landlord that ups your rent every year. And you Ooh. are not that friendly. Well, you're making me feel bad for renting my apartment, which I love. But well, guess what? Guess what? We're going to help you get your place. You and are. you know what? You do have a very cool apartment. I love it. And it's so easy. But I would love to see you get in return when you sell it five years from now and you go to buy your whatever house in Malibu or in the hills, yes. that you, ha you get money back and you've made money and now you have that nest egg to put towards that bigger house. My point exactly, I think that that is, that is what I wanna do. You guys seeing your life in Malibu, I was like, I, I want this in my life. I want a big table with my family around it and my kids and my friends, like, I want Brandon's life. Let's go to Q&A so you can school us on how to get your life, Brandon. Today's Q&A, we took questions from the audience. And audience, you guys can also drop a question in the comment below, and we'll try to answer it in real time. First question, which I love this one, what's your craziest showing story, Brandon? craziest showing story and i always go back to this one because i can never forget it we had this really crazy client amazing guy very wealthy guy um lived in the bird streets had a big old beautiful house with a view and he had this bear rug like it was like four big bears put together in the living room with a straight shot of los angeles right so we would always show the houses and he was moving on up. He wanted to buy a bear Wait, rug. a real bear rug? Like real bear? This was a real bear rug. This guy was a hunter, okay? Oh. Okay? And listen, who knows? Maybe it was vintage. Let's not get, let's not call PETA. Anyways, <laughs> we walk in the door, and I am not bullshitting you. Excuse my French. This is dead honest. The guy literally has five girls with him in the middle, and they're all naked. And I... What? This is not a joke. He had five girls on the bear rug that they slept there the night before. Literally, there was three on one side. He was in the middle, and there were two on the other side. And he just looks at me, and I go, Ken, I, I go, we have a, I go, we have a showing. We have a, we have a big second showing. This guy wants to buy the house. Like, and he was just like, he just bundled up in the bear rug and just basically said, go for it and show the house. And he basically just stayed there. While you showed the house? While we showed the house. Oh, And we ended up God. selling it to the guy. You ended up selling it to that guy? We ended up selling it to the guy. Oh, my God. And, and this is not... What girls do? What? The they girls, were, they were obviously too. partying all night. They were obviously very hungover. And Ooh. they really didn't care. It was one of those Hollywood realtor moments. Yes. That ever be forever imprinted in my mind. My <laughs> my wife, who's sitting next to me, will vouch. Right. Yes, Rainy, you're sitting right next to me. Rainy, yes. Okay, she will you, vouch. You can't will you write this shit. Now? You cannot write this shit. I sw it's, I'm not exaggerating. This is a real story. I love it. I love it. Okay, uh, comment section. Loving it. Loving it. Uh, you, Marasa, says, William, my man, it's been an honor watching your property videos. Next question. Happiest moment of your life? First one that comes to mind. Happiest moment of my life, I think it was first one. Uh, uh, having my kids. Mm. Which both, just both on this. Yeah, both having my kids as a family, creating a family with my wife and being a unit and having my kids and seeing life. And it's very humbling. Yeah. Having but... kids to, to me is very humbling. And, 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 and working with kids and living with kids is, for me, it's like all about humility. And sometimes it's easy to get out there and get involved in deals and think you're the man and you know it's everything's you're moving and shaking and and but it, but kids really ground you. And you didn't grow up with a dad. You grew up with a mom. So do you ever? Does that ever mess with you? Are you ever like oh, I gotta be the best dad I can be? Or like how do you deal with that? Well, I always, you know, my father 
was an amazing person, but he went down the wrong road. And uh, I tried to do everything that he didn't do, which was really show up for my family, be there for my family, support my family, not use drugs and alcohol, not be out past 11 o'clock at night. And uh, it seems to be working out. Oh my God, like those rules to live by, people. Rules to live by. Do you, did, did you have a mentor when you first started in real estate? Well, actually I did. I actually did have a mentor. Who? And, and it wasn't like a, it wasn't a massive mentor, but it was Saeed Normand. I was very good friends with his son and him and, and Saeed and myself had a very good relationship and we would start going surfing together. And, and babe, we, we started going surfing together. <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> We started going surfing together and he saw that I knew everybody and he saw that I like to help people and I like to guide people and be like, oh, you could find that over there. Oh, you should go over there. You should go over there. And so he was like, you should get into real estate. And I had thought about getting into real estate because my best friend was in real estate and he showed me a check one time and I couldn't believe how big the check was. And the check at the time wasn't even that much money. It was like $35,000. But to me, it was a massive amount of money. Um, and still a lot of money. It still is, yeah. And, and, and he gave me some really good words of advice. I ended up getting into real estate because of him. And he gave me great words of advice, which I will tell you guys again. And it's pick your neighborhood, become a specialist, know everything everything about what's selling, who's buying, who who lives there, and then go talk about everything to everybody and just be a social butterfly and talk about real estate whenever you have an opportunity but don't be like that pushy let me help you i'm your guy right just be a wealth of knowledge be like a doctor and that's how i always looked at myself is how can i help how can i be of service how can i not be that pushy realtor which by the way i've been that pushy realtor so <laughs> i'm guilty of that too so and like I went to a showing with you. You're not pushy at all, actually. No, there's times though when I want listings, I'm fighting for stuff that I could be over pushy, and you know it's a fine line. You got to read your audience. Okay, well then, what's your funniest real estate negotiation? Funniest real estate negotiation? Yeah, maybe um, something somebody asked for. Well, it it was it was uh, DJ Khaled. He wanted those. Rainy, what were those candles? He wanted three. He wanted three hundred dip tea candles. What? In bay flavor. And then I have a dip tea candle. Is it, are, is, and it then this, he, is it this big one? Yes. And then he wanted a box of. And then he wanted a box of chocolate. So he wanted like thirty of those. This we were just trying to make the guy happy. I was a big fan. I love his music. I love what he's done. And I'm like, sure, man, I got you, bro. You want candles? Like he's you like, want I want 50 it. candles, DJ Khaled. Yeah, he wanted it for his wife, and I could only find like 150. They were all sold out. I'm going to every store trying to find them, and I'm legit going to every store to try to find them. I mean, this is the crazy stuff we have to do as realtors, and we only could get like 150. And he's like, only 150? I was like, Man, come on. I'm like, Bro. Which house is this? Which house did you buy? He was, we were selling him a house up in uh, one of the states off of Mahond. Oh, my God. That is a crazy story. I love but DJ he's Khaled. Closed. He's still closed, even with 150. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I he's love that. Uh, some girl in the comment section, Lou B and A, is saying, "I love you, William," and crying, and then now she's, now she's, her heart is broken. I don't know what's going on. One of your friends. <laughs> Are there any good options for veterans and homeowners? What do you mean options? I would say like, yeah, there's veterans loans. Oh, 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 veterans loans. Yeah. I, you know, I haven't dealt with, I don't think I've ever dealt with the veterans loan. And now that you say it, I probably will. But yeah, there's great options. You know, call your banks who want to lend. Tell people that all the time. People, you know, a lot of people think, oh, I don't make enough money and I don't do this and that. Let me tell you something. Banks want to lend money. There's never been in our history of yes. ever bank lending that money is this cheap. So use it. You deserve it. You just have to go through the hoops. It's a bunch of hoops that I didn't want to go through. Like whenever somebody calls me and says, you're going to have to do this and that, I'm like, okay, I'm over that. But you got to do it. And once you do right. it, you're like, okay, that wasn't so bad. 
and, and banks want to lend you money, believe it or not. You make 40000 consistently. You make 60000 You make 100000 They want to lend you money. They want you to buy a place. That's good to know. That's really good to know. So don't be afraid of the banks. This one um, came up uh, multiple times. What are three areas a new agent in California should focus on? You know, I would say focus on wherever you're comfortable with and wherever you know. Because you got to really, you know, most successful realtors started in their backyard. So, and listen, if you want to move to, you know, I mean, there's so many great areas in California. I mean, there's opportunity everywhere. Everybody wants to own. We're selling the one thing that people want to own, and that's a place to live. We're not yeah. selling Ferraris. We're not selling Lamborghinis. Everybody needs a place to live. And that's the great thing about selling real estate. What, uh, we've got a question in the comment section from Defensio. What do you think of the 800 Stradella Road property? I don't even know what property that is. Yeah, that was a property we sold. It was a Paul McLean, super cool. Um, it was a very linear property, which I like. What? Oh, 800 was the land. That was, yeah, that was 864 I was talking about. 800 was a big piece of land that we sold for $36 million. It was like 1.7 acres. It's a beautiful site. And uh, I, I believe that they're building a beautiful property on it right now. I love it. What are some of your best tips for following up? This was when we got a lot. You know, persistence. My favorite saying is luck is when determination and persistence meets. And you got to be persistent. You got to follow up and you got to just make it a habit. The more you make it a habit and you get to calling people where it's not like you're bothering them. Hey, following up. Just wanted to see if you got that. Okay, great. Making sure. Let me know how I could help. If you need anything else, uh, when do you want to go out looking for a property? Did you call your bank? Okay. Do you need me to help with anything? Is there anything I need to make your life easier? And it just make people's lives easier. I think well, what that's if, really what if you what if you show a property and you text the bu the buyer and they don't respond? How how much do you wait to text them again? Uh, you know, wait another day or two, and then if they don't respond after two or three times, hey, following up. Do you want to look at other properties? Was there something you liked you didn't like? And if if they don't, you know, after three or four times, if they're not. Who knows? Maybe if they were a friend and you had a long time, maybe they were dealing with an issue. Listen, a lot of times we think it's us. Yeah. A lot of people have a lot of things like family, friends, death, work, taxes. So it's not always us. If we come from the, the you know, if we come from trying to help and be of service, then it's, it's so much easier. And you're not that pushy realtor, just me, 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 right. me. Don't take it personally. Yeah. I love that. What do you think about door knocking for new agents? I love, I think door knocking is such a great way to do it, but I think you got to be prepared. You can't just door knock and go, can I sell your house? You need to door knock and say, oh, by the way, did you know that house just sold a month ago and it sold for this price per square foot? I've done the due diligence on your house and your house is at $1,500 a square foot. It's 5,000 square feet. That totally. brings you up to like $8 million. Have you ever thought about selling? Because I think now is a good time to sell. Yes. Or I could potentially find a buyer. Or are you ever open for it if I found you a buyer? You know, give them options. You just can't go in for the direct, hey, do you want me to list your house? Right. And right now during COVID, it's not allowed. Martin underscore Realty says, but when, it's, when it is allowed, that's amazing advice from Brandon. Do your research. Do your homework. A good question from Joe Good Hula. My girlfriend is becoming an agent. What are the two top two pieces of advice for working with your significant other? Um, be prepared to, cause you know, I thought when I could get, I got in this job, I was like, Oh, I'll just try this as a part-time job and I'll try to do other things while I, and I realized very, very quickly that this is not a part-time job. Sure. If you want to do a deal here and there, and maybe you have families that are, you know, buying stuff and they're only dedicated to you, but usually never works out. It's a, this is a full-time gig and you have to really pound the pavement if you want to be successful at this business. I love that. Well, we're, we're going into our quick fire round of just yes or no questions. Brandon, we prepared these questions for you. Are you ready? Yep. I could die tomorrow happy, yes or no? Yes. I have everything I need right now in this moment. Yes. I want more employees. 
Yes. <laughs> I would <laughs> I would appear on million dollar listing. Yes. I would like to have another uh, I would have like to have another child. Yes. I would um open an office in New York. Yes. And I would spend over a million dollars marketing the right property. Yes. Wow, all yeses. I'm saying yes today to everything because I watched that movie with Jim Carrey, Yes Man. Yes. And when you say yes, things open up, you know? When you say no, things get closed. Well, you know, your daughter in Malibu, when we were there, pretended she was looking in a crystal ball and said you guys were going to have another baby named Rosie, so... I'm sure Ooh, she I like that. <laughs> She's on her way. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much, Brandon. One last question before we go, which is uh, you also work in development. I want to flip a property. What's your advice for a first timer? Well, I'm going to go back, back to this, gonna go back to this again. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go back to this again. And I'm always going to go back to this. You got to do your homework. You got to realize that when you find a good deal, that it has potential and you're like, wait, that these two properties sold for X amount. If I added square footage or if I redid it and just cleaned it up, I could sell it for that amount. So it's got to add up. And if it has unique features like a great layout, high ceilings, a view, a big backyard, a beautiful pool, an incredible master suite. They got to have things or, or it's just, you know, this is what it's going for in the neighborhood. And if you clean it up and fix it, there's got to be a formula and you got to take the risk because, you know, I've, I've, I have done okay on properties. I've broken even on properties and I've made money, but every time along the way, it's a lesson learned. And, you know, I do this more for life lessons and really trying to become better. And I don't, I don't try to focus on the outcome when I make this amount of money. I really try to just focus in the now and what I have to do. And then don't live in the result. Just work to the process and let it and let God give me the lesson that I need to learn through this. And that's what I love about developing. It's such a creative process. It's such a journey. It's like making a film. Would you ever do multifamily? Because you've only done... I would, lo I would love to do multifamily. I would love to do... I would love to build a skyscraper. I mean, why not? I, I mean, I would love to do it all. Why not? I mean, you know, as, <laughs> as we know it, we only live once. I love that. I love that. Oh, this is the last good question from Crusader Sanchez. This is our final question, guys. And Brandon's got to go. When seeing new constructions out and about, and how do you build a relationship with the developer? You know, I think, again, going back to it, persistence and information and knowledge. Oh, hey, by the way, did you see they just put that house on the market? Well, if they put that house on the market, I think you have a better backyard. I think you have more square footage. So if they're asking this, and let's say they get this, your house should be worth X, and this is what I would list it at. Um, you know, I can really help you go through this house. I'd love to start with you now and help you consult and let you know what I, you know, get my personal opinion because this is all I do. And I look at what's selling. I look at what materials people are, are really um, are, are, are liking these days. Yeah, what's the floor too. plan? What's the needs and the likes and the dislikes of buyers? Us as agents have the power because we're right there on the floor really finding out what buyers want. And you know, as agents, sure we could give the pitch of the property and everything, but I think the most important thing is really listening and asking the questions. How do you respond to this? What do you like about it? What don't you like about it? Oh, so you wouldn't buy this? What What have you seen that you like so far? And they go, oh, I've seen this house on Alpine. You go, well, why didn't you buy it? Well, we made a low ball offer and we lost out to it. And that was the perfect house. And we're so, now I have a gauge of what they like in yes. my mind. And I could go, okay. Mm. And I go through my wealth of knowledge because I've done all my homework. And I go, oh my God, you like that house? There is a house on Maple. I think it's better than that house, but guess what? Did you learn your lesson that you can't lowball? You're, you're, this is 
people, that's one of the most desirable houses and somebody else is going to get that. If, if I could bring you this house at this number, are you, re are you ready to step up? And they go, well, and that's, you know, that's the whole gig of, and sometimes there's deals where you find a steal, but usually when you find a steal and it's a deal, it needs work and it needs a lot of, it needs a lot of upgrades, which people aren't willing to do the work because it's a big pain in the ass. And a lot of people will tell you building a home is brain damage. Yeah. You've, you've gone through it multiple times. And you just finished your Malibu house remodel. You've got five projects in the works this year. So you've definitely got your work cut out for you. But I want to see you do a commercial building. I want to see you do a multi-family, Brandon. Well, we're going to. We're going to do it. So sky's the limit. You know, stay focused. Stay healthy. We're going to get through this. Um, and I think the key in life is just is really living in today and not getting ahead of yourself, not going in the past and, and just checking in. I always listen. We all have fear. We all have doubt. But when I just check in and say, am I, am I OK right now? Do I have a roof over my head? Do I have enough to eat? Yeah. OK, how can I be of service today and help others? And when you think like that, all of a sudden, everything else goes away. And that's how I work with my clients. I think, how can I be of service? How can I make their lives easier? Because guys, guess what? We're selling the one thing everybody needs, a place a to live. I love that. Well, wise words from the even wiser Brandon Williams of Williams and Williams. Brandon, thank you for taking the time to do our Q&A day out of your busy ass schedule. And once again, I'm gonna leave you with uh, me on a jet ski. Yeah. Define Thank you guys for tuning in. That's some air time right there. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. Thanks so much, Brandon. Love you too, Alexander. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. He, uh, he is so humble. He's so wise. Thank you, Brandon, for stopping by again and sharing all your insane knowledge. If you guys miss some of the questions, this will be posted to our IGTV. Thank you again for watching Real Talk. We're all here to learn and so grateful for all uh, Williams and Williams' time that they come on and share their insights. I'm going to go work on their account. You guys go work on selling some houses. And once again, thank you for keeping it real talk. Bye-bye.